Recently, the fossil fuel industry has been pushing carbon capture technologies as a way to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases entering the atmosphere. Carbon capture and sequestration, CCS, and carbon capture utilization and storage, CCUS, are technologies that capture carbon emissions at fossil fuel powered plants and industrial facilities. Coal, oil, and natural gas producers are promoting these technologies so that they can continue to profit from the production of fossil fuels. In this video, we will determine if it makes sense to pursue these technologies to combat climate change. Fossil fuel companies are promoting two types of carbon capture technology. CCS, or carbon capture and sequestration, removes carbon from electric power plants and other industrial processes before it's emitted into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. This carbon, usually in the form of carbon dioxide, is injected deep underground so that it can't escape into the atmosphere. CSUS, or carbon capture utilization and storage, uses the captured CO2 to improve the extraction of oil and gas from the ground. Both CCS and CSUS technologies are energy intensive and expensive. Additionally, since the CSUS technology produces more oil and gas, it really doesn't reduce the amount of carbon dioxide entering the atmosphere in the long run. Three different kinds of carbon capture technology are currently in use. The most commonly used technology is called post-combustion carbon capture. This technology captures carbon dioxide from the flue gases produced when the coal, oil, or gas is burned to operate a power plant or other industrial process. Pre-combustion carbon capture reduces the carbon from the fuel before it is burned by heating the fuel in, combination, in a combination of steam and oxygen. This is a more efficient process than post-combustion post carbon capture, but it is more expensive and can't be adapted to some power plants. A third technology called oxy-fuel con combustion technology burns the fossil fuel in a gas mixture containing a lot of pure oxygen. This process allows the CO2 to be removed easily from the flue gases but is relatively expensive and has not been used much so far. Direct CO2 capture from the air uses a chemical process to remove CO2 from the air so that it can be sequestered underground. However, because the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere is so low, it turns out that enormous amounts of electricity are needed to achieve any significant reduction in atmospheric CO2. The literature is replete with a host of positive projections about the efficiency and value of various carbon capture technologies and programs. Often projecting efficiencies over 90% for the removal of carbon from coal, oil, and natural gas-fired electric power plants. However, the real-world efficiencies of most carbon capture pilot projects of this type have fallen far short of the projections, and I will discuss the failure to meet projections later in this video. Most of the early positive projections for carbon capture were formulated without taking into consideration the recent rapid changes in the energy market and in the transportation sector. In the energy sector, the levelized cost of renewable energy Utility scale solar in both onshore and offshore wind has plummeted in the last few years, making those two sources of electric energy much cheaper than that from coal, oil, and gas fired power plants, even before the cost of adding carbon capture technology to the fossil fuel plants is taken into consideration. The second factor that was not considered in most of the early projections for carbon capture projects is the relatively rapid increase of electrification in the transportation sector, which is reducing the need for enhanced oil and gas recovery to meet transportation fuel demands. 
carbon capture and sequestration has been promoted by coal companies as a way to produce so-called clean coal. Carbon capture equipment connected to the electric power plants that burn coal removes some percentage of the CO2 generated by burning coal to drive the steam turbines that produce electricity, and the removed CO2 is injected deep underground to take it out of the environment. While the percentage of CO2 removed from the power plant's flue gases can be quite high, that doesn't take into account CO2 emissions and CO2 equivalent emissions that take place during the mining and transportation of the coal. It's also the case that the carbon capture equipment connected to the coal-fired power plant requires a substantial amount of electricity to operate, and that often comes from gas-fired turbines which produce their own CO2 emissions. In theory, it might be possible to use a portion of the coal-fired power plant's output to operate the carbon capture equipment, but that would then drive up the cost of the electricity produced, making it even less competitive with other sources of electric energy. While storing the captured CO2 deep underground certainly is possible, such storage is not without potential problems, such as stability issues associated with seismic activity and the effect that the stored CO2 might have on aquifers used for supplying port potable water. Carbon capture equipment is expensive and the capital cost of the equipment must be factored into the cost of the electricity produced by the plant over its lifetime. And while the scrubbers connected to the smokestacks of modern coal-fired power plants remove a lot of the pollutants released when the coal is burned, they are not 100% effective, and some of those pollutants enter the lower atmosphere where they can affect human health. The costs associated with the air, this air pollution generally are not included when projections are made about the effectiveness of carbon capture technologies. A few years ago, Mark Jacobson, who is a professor of civil engineering at Stanford University, published a paper in which he carefully examined the CO2 and other greenhouse gases such as methane that are emitted by a typical coal-fired power plant with and without carbon capture equipment. The results are shown on the left. In addition, he calculated the social cost in dollars per megawatt hour from operating the plant with and without carbon capture equipment. The results are quite interesting. In the figure on the left, red represents the CO2 emitted during coal combustion. Orange represents the carbon dioxide equivalent upstream from coal mining methane emission. Blue represents the carbon dioxide equivalent of other greenhouse gases emitted upstream besides methane. Yellow represents the CO2 emitted by burning natural gas to power the carbon capture equipment. Green represents the equivalent carbon dioxide of the methane emitted upstream during the natural gas production and transport. And purple represents the carbon dioxide equivalent of other greenhouse gases emitted during the upstream natural gas production. What we can conclude from the figure on the left is that using natural gas-fired turbines to power carbon capture equipment only slightly reduces the overall emission of greenhouse gases from coal-fired power plants. If renewable energy such as wind is used to power the carbon capture equipment, that further reduces the emissions of greenhouse gases from a coal-fired power plant. However, Simply substituting wind energy for the energy produced by the coal plant ends up into introducing lower amounts of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. Note that even a renewable energy source, such as wind, still produces some greenhouse gas emissions. These are associated mainly with the manufacture and installation of the wind turbines, as well as the disposal of wind turbines at the end of their useful lives. In the figure on the right, light blue represents the cost of generating the electricity and the capital costs of the carbon capture equipment. 
Brown represents the air pollution health costs associated with the electric generation, and black represents the climate costs associated with operating the power plant for 20 years. What is most surprising is that running the coal-fired plant without any carbon capture has lower overall social costs than either carbon capture powered by natural gas turbines or wind power. And of course, replacing the coal plant with wind energy has the lowest social cost. Carbon capture utilization and storage has essentially all the drawbacks of carbon capture and sequestration, along with the additional drawback that the extra oil and gas produced by the enhanced recovery is burned, thereby putting extra CO2 directly into the atmosphere. Thus, the push by the oil and gas industry for carbon capture is little more than greenwashing, as far as I can see. Jacobson also examined the removal and sequestration of carbon dioxide directly from the air, and again found that using gas turbines to operate carbon capture equipment is a losing proposition. As the figure on the left shows, the process is so energy intensive that if gas turbines are used to power the carbon capture equipment, more greenhouse gases are put into the atmosphere than, it take, than are taken out. If the carbon capture equipment is powered by renewable energy, more greenhouse gas is removed from the atmosphere than enters it from the carbon capture process, but not as much as just substituting wind energy for the carbon capture technology in the first place. And as might be expected, the social costs are lowest when renewables are substituted for fossil fuel power generation. And as might be expected, substituting wind power or other renewable energy for fossil fuels results in the lowest overall social cost. While direct air capture of CO2 may well be needed to keep global temperature increases in check, it appears that the best way to accomplish this may be by reforestation efforts and more sustainable agricultural practices. From my perspective, Carbon capture certainly is not the panacea that the fossil fuel industry often claims, but it also is not just a pipe dream. The reason that I hold that opinion is that there are industrial processes such as cement and aggregate manufacturing and steel production that emit a small but non-negligible amount of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. For example, cement production accounts for about 8% of all greenhouse gas emissions. Carbon capture technology powered by renewable energy currently is the best way to reduce those emissions. So carbon capture does have a role to play in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, but it's a relatively small role in my opinion. I hope you have found this video interesting and informative. If you have any questions, please add them as comments and I will do my best to provide you with answers. You can support my YouTube channel by buying me a coffee at the following website.